For the next oh, 90 minutes or so, I'm going to be covering uh, and showing you some advanced Galente ships. Uh, those are going to be the Galente Tech 2, Tech 3, and cross-trained faction ships. And we'll briefly touch on capital ships, although I won't be shows off today. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neville Smith. I am the Uni Teaching Manager. I report to uh, Berfinan Isu. I'm sure I mispronounced that. I do enjoy mispronouncing his name. We call him Bear for short. Uh, and uh, thank you. <laughs> well, that's what you get for having an unpronounceable name. Yeah. And I'm here as part of the education department in Eve University. And every once in a while, I like to do classes like this one. Uh, I am a Galente character. I've been playing E for over four years now, or almost four years now, uh, almost all of that time in the uni, but also had some experience in, uh, in other corps, so I'll share that with you today. And uh, I do fly all of these ships. Uh, I have all of the skills to fly everything uh, that I'm going to be showing you today. And I have to tell you that uh, I have a lot of fun in some of these advanced Galente ships. And I'll give you some of my personal opinions about what I think about each of these, as well as just a general quick overview of uh, what each of these ships are good for. Uh, the experience, uh, opinions expressed are solely my own. I'm sure some of you may have other opinions. Feel free to enter those into the class.e-uni chat channel as we go along, if you wish. Or if you have any specific questions, let me know. Uh, if you are looking for me to give you lots of fittings today for these ships, uh, I'm afraid you're going to come away a little disappointed. Uh, we do not have time to go through the fittings on each of these ships. We'd be here forever and because there's a, an almost infinite variety of different ways to fit these ships. And so I'm not going to be getting into fittings, but we will give you a quick overview. Yes, there is a syllabus. I've just posted into the class chat channel the link to the syllabus. If you want to follow along with me, if that helps you, feel free to do so. Or you can go back later and reread uh, all of the notes and the links. Uh, it'll help you uh, as a handy reference later on. As I said, I am at the Caldari Business Tribunal Station in Altrat. I will, will be undocking in any but not all of these ships. If you want to be outside the station within docking range, you get a chance to take a look at them and uh, view their awesomeness up close. That would be perfectly okay. Just keep an eye on local, please. If any war targets show up, please dock up immediately. I do not want to be responsible for a mass murder of uh, unis because they were entranced by the beauty of the Galente ships. That would be really bad. This class is going to be all lecture with some Q&A. As I said, it's probably going to last about 90 minutes. Okay, let's go on ahead. Sylvanium, I like your attitude. Let's talk first of all about general Galente ship design. Um, with a few exceptions, the most common Tech 1 Galente ships from the smallest frigates to the largest battleships all carry a common general ship design philosophy. They uh, emphasize hybrid guns, which are blasters and rail guns. They tend to be uh, armor tank. They generally have an armor tank, so tend to have lots of hit points that are emphasized of the uh, equation as opposed to the shield. They have heavy reliance on drones. Uh, they, almost all Galente ships have a drone bay. Uh, some of them can be quite sizable, even though that may not be their primary method of, of, uh, of damage dealing. Uh, they also have quite large capacitors compared to other ships, especially ships of, say, the Minmatar. Uh, they need those to power the guns uh, and also to power active tanks. And for EWAR, uh, the Galente ships emphasize exclusively sensor dampeners, which are very annoying. And, in fact, they've gotten a recent bu uh, buff in the uh, one of the recent patches, the Retribution patch, which makes it a little bit more effective these days. You will find some exceptions, however. There are some Galente ships that don't adhere to that kind of philosophy uh, overall. Uh, some of them can be quite flexible. For example, the Myrmidon can be fitted as a active tank uh, armor wrapper. It can be uh, fitted as a passive shield ship, and it does equally well in all of those roles. So there are some exceptions to the Galente ship line, but generally speaking, hybrid guns, armor tank, 
drones, big capacitors, and if they use E-War, uh, they'll use sensor dampeners. Now, Galente advanced tech ships, ships of the Tech-2, Tech-3 strategic cruiser, or even the cross-trained pirate ships that are out there, um, do provide some variants on that common ship design philosophy, and they do give skilled pilots more options for achieving their objectives. And if you're not familiar with the advanced Galente ships, it can be a little confusing because they do look like, in many cases, the Tech-1 variants, but they do very, very different things. So I'm going to be covering those in more detail. Thank you, Edward. Uh, so we have a war target in Eggfe. Uh, I'm not going to undock if we have a war target nearby. The main difference between uh, Tech-1 and uh, advanced level ships are that Tech-1 ships tend to be for a particular role, but Tech-2 ships will, are very specialized and go very deep on a particular function. Uh, so uh, they're less flexible overall, with the exception being the strategic cruiser, but uh, the, they do what they do uh, uh, in their individual sp- uh, specific function extremely well. Absolutely, and if you want to link fits as we go along that you find helpful, please do so. I will not be li- linking fits here, but if you guys want to link fits and debate them while we go along, uh, feel free to do so. Let's go right on to the ships and just start to show off a few of these. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the frigates, the Tech-2 Galente frigates, uh, the first of which is the Keras, which is the electronic attack frigate. By the way, if I could get a volunteer to link some of the names in here, that would be fantastic. Much appreciated. I'm just going to drag my ships from my hangar in there as well so that uh, if you don't have it handy, uh, we can take a look. There you go. Thank you very much, Mick Savanium. Much appreciated. The uh, Karis is a frigate-sized version of a combat recon ship. It's based on the hull of the Mollus, electronic warfare frigate. Uh, but it does get special bonuses uh, for sensor dampening and for the range of warp scramblers and warp disruptors. Uh, most people fit the Keras, emphasizing the range of the warp scramblers and warp disruptors, uh, and uh, it actually does kind of suck. <laughs> the problem with the electronic attack frigates is they get some mild bonuses, but not really super awesome bonuses. There's nothing that an electronic attack frigate can do that a uh, recon cruiser can do better. Uh, and so they really, I think electronic attack frigates really kind of, um, they need some love, honestly. Uh, I've flown the Karis in uh, gate camps, and they can be quite effective because the extra range uh, might help you to grab someone and scram uh, or warp disrupt them, but they are expensive. Uh, they tend to be targeted. They have very, uh, very low uh, tanks, uh, very low, uh, small tanks, so they, they easily blow up, and not many people fly them very much. Uh, so I, I have high hopes that in the, when they go back and continue the, uh, the tier aside of all the different ships, that they might give some electronic attack frigates a little bit more love to make them a little bit more effective. But right now, they're just not particularly good at their role. Let's talk about the Galente Tech-2 Interceptors. Now, Interceptors, otherwise known as NTs or Scepters or whatever you want to call them for short, are the first choice for tacklers everywhere but in NullSec, uh, in NullSec interdictors and Heavy interdictor cruisers uh, tend to take over, and we'll talk a little bit more about those later. But everywhere in NullSec, if you want to tackle someone, an interceptor is the way to go. They have the highest scan resolution of any ship class, and that allows them to target and lock very quickly. They are extremely fast as a rule, and especially when you fit them for extra speed, they can get some ridiculous space. Yeah, you do see them a lot in wormhole space as well. That's a good point, Enta, uh, definitely. Um, and there are two Galente interceptors. One is designed purely for tackling uh, in fleets with a bonus to range of tackling modules, and the other is designed more for damage dealing. But uh, both interceptors are based on the Atron, which looks like a bat wing frigate. Uh, and uh, they're actually kind of cool looking, if you don't mind my saying so. The Ares is an exceptional fleet tackler. 
Uh, you can click on the link there that Mick has posted and uh, take a look at some of the special bonuses and information on the Aries. Uh, it gets some fantastic bonuses for the range for Warp Scrambler and Warp Disruptor range. It is pretty quick. Uh, in fact, it can be very quick and uh, is very effective as a fleet tackler. The popular version is the Tyrannus. A Tyrannus is a little slower. Uh, but it gets fantastic DPS uh, damage per second for a frigate. Uh, it is, in fact, one of the best dogfighting frigates out there. It was very popular for some time. Uh, it's less popular now because of the recent buffs of the last few patches to assault frigates, which now are much more favored if you're going to be doing uh, flying a damage dealer as a frigate. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about some of the assault frigates coming up later. It, it is still a good ship, uh, and if you see a Tyrannus, in, a good, in the hands of a good pilot, it can be very dangerous. You just don't see them as often as you used to. By the way, if you guys can keep track of uh, any war targets in the area, I'm not undocking at this time, but uh, if we see one, uh, if it gets clear, an egg fay will uh, we'll start to undock some of these for you. There are also cloaked frigates, Tech 2 cloaked frigates. Oh, it is clear. Okay, well, great. Um, I'll... Trust your judgment there. I'll start to undock some of these. There are two types of cloaked frigates in the uh, Galente Advanced ship line. Uh, one is a covert ops frigate known as the Helios, and the other is a stealth bomber known as the Nemesis. Uh, the Helios, which I'll go ahead and undock now. The Helios is based on the Imicus frame. Uh, it is very good at uh, scanning down. There you go. And uh, does get a bonus for the scan strength of probes. Uh, and uh, you can find enemy targets and gather intelligence. You can sneak up close to enemy ships undetected and for locations of fleet mates. Uh, it's also quite good at exploration. It uses that same probe scanning bonus to lo locate uh, a PVE exploration sites. However, it is very fragile, and the Helios generally avoids combat uh, and remains invisible at all times because you can fit over ops cloak and warp wall cloaked. It also gets a really strange 50% bonus for scout drone thermal damage, which is really odd because it can only carry one of them. So if you fit a hobgoblin, which is the only drone it'll fit in there, um, then you get a little extra damage from it. Deal. Uh, however, I would strongly recommend that you do not use the Helios uh, for uh, PvP, although some people do and have been quite successful as solo PvP. It's not all bad. Uh, I would actually say the Imicus now, because of the recent buffs uh, and improvements in the uh, Imicus with the tier side going on these days, is arguably better for high-sec exploration combat sites because it has a bigger drone capacity. And uh, although the probe scanning bonus is less, so it takes a little bit longer. It's not quite as good as uh, at actually finding the sites. But if you're going to be doing uh, high-sec exploration, I would uh, probably recommend doing that in Imicus these days instead of a perhaps a Helios. Some people may disagree with me. It's a fantastic scout ship, though. If you're uh, interested in becoming a scout and doing covert op scouting, the Helios is a fantastic ship. Okay, I'm getting into my stealth bomber here. Let me go ahead and undock that for you. The stealth bomber is the Nemesis. Stealth bombers can also warp while cloaked and can lock targets very quickly after decloaking. They can fit torpedo launchers and bomb launchers, although you only do bombs in null sec. Uh, stealth bombers put out a lot of alpha damage, and they can die very fast if anybody manages to hit them. Yes, yes, W space 2. Um, they're very, very effective. Uh, it is also a very, very cool-looking ship. It used to be based on the Tristan. Uh, they've now recently uh, updated the design of the Nemesis, and it's very cool. Uh, so it's got this kind of odd flying wing thing. It's very, very cool. Yeah, it's more like a crab. It's probably better. Or a stingray. Or, yeah, I like that too. That's even better. Kind of a fat stingray. Let's look at assault frigates. I mentioned those a little bit earlier. There are two assault frigates in the Galente line. 
the Ishker and the Enyo. Uh, one is a tanking assault frigate, uh, which is a little bit tankier. I personally love the Ishker. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, it's a drone boat. It is uh, just a superb design in every respect. Uh, it's uh, based on... Sorry, based on the Incursus hull design, let me go ahead and undock in mine. There you go. So the uh, the Ishker is a really cool drone boat. Basically, you get an extra five cubic meters of drone bay space uh, for every level of uh, assault frigate skill that you train, which means that your drone bay can get up to 50 cubic meters of drone base space, depending on your skill. Uh, very fast, very tanky, uh, very powerful. I routinely do level three missions in an Ishker, and I've done a few, but not all, level four missions, which is a lot of fun. Um, the thing is super fast, hard to hit, puts out a lot of damage, and is a great drone boat if you've got the skills. So I, I actually make these. I have lots of them, so I use them quite a bit. Let me go ahead and undock now in the Enyo. Uh, the Enyo is the damage dealer version of the Assault Frigate. There are a couple ways to fit the Enyo, but most people fit it with blasters, and it puts out a ton of DPS for a small frigate. Uh, it's, uh, it can also be fit as a medium-range sniper if you want, which gets uh, about 50 or 60 kilometers of optimal range, a little bit longer for... Um, uh, if you have the right T2 rail guns and spike ammo, uh, that can be a bit of a surprise. But most people, the Enyo is a face-melting blaster boat, uh, very good in um, uh, frigate fleets if you want to be the damage dealer. The Enyo is a great one. It's also fast as well, so it's on targets pretty quickly. Uh, very effective boat. And this is the favorite boat. A lot of people used to fly Tyrannuses, now fly Enyos. Uh, because the Enyo does put out more damage. It's uh, just a little slower than the Tyrannus and is very effective. Good question, Lynn. I'm sorry I'm not checking all the, the questions here as we go along. If I've missed any, please repeat them. Uh, I would say that the Ishker is better for mission running because the drones are better suited for that. Uh, I would say the problem with the Enyo is that you have to get close in order to do some of the more advanced missions, of course, you can encounter folks who will scram you or do other unnice things to you, so it makes it a little bit more challenging. So I definitely like the Ishker for mission running better than the Enyo. The Enyo is really a fantastic PvP ship. That's a good point. Yeah, I do see, Mix, that's, a, that's an excellent point. I do see the Enyo used a lot in gangs or even solo for ratting in Nullsec space. Let's talk about the Galente's Tech 2 Destroyer, which is an interdictor. Let me find my Eris here. There you go. Uh, if you're familiar with the Catalyst, this will look very familiar to you because it's based on the same hull, just slightly different colors and a couple more cool things hanging off of it. Uh, the Eris plays a very key role in Nullsec space. The Eris can launch warp disruption probes, which create a bubble with a 20-kilometer radius. And uh, nothing can warp if they get caught in the bubble, no matter how many warp core stabilizers they have. Uh, anyone trying to warp to a spot within 150 kilometers of the edge of a bubble will be pulled to the edge of it if the bubble is in line with two objects that the ship is warping between. So often you'll see the uh, interdictors like the Eris uh, put up their bubbles somewhere between two gates and they'll actually catch people. Or they'll actually put the uh, bubble behind the gate. Yes, uh, a bubble is a, if you're not familiar with a bubble, uh, it literally looks like a big soap bubble. Uh, it is a force field that is erected around a warp disruption probe and it will actually catch ships and becomes impossible for them to warp away if they are caught in the bubble. Yeah, we actually need to teach a course on bubbles here. Uh, I'd ha I'm not sure, Slovenian, why it has a missile bonus. I mean, actually, this thing is very fragile, and uh, it tends to blow up uh, pretty easily. So what most people do in the Eris is they will actually... Uh, you know, get to where they need to be. They'll they'll uh, launch their probe. I'm sorry, their bubbles, and they'll sneak off and try and cloak up. Uh, that's usually what you see there too, so they don't get blown up. And of course, it's only seen in null space uh, because uh, bubbles can't be used 
outside of null sec. So the Eris really is only useful in zero zero. Yeah, that's true. I keep forgetting about wormhole space. Wormhole space is technically zero zero. Ante, you keep reminding me. Okay. Yep. People in wormholes will put bubbles around the entrance and catch people coming in or trying to escape. Uh, and uh, interdictors are very good at that. So those are all of the Tech 2 frigates in the Galente Advanced line. Let's go into some of the cruisers. And the first I'm going to show you here are the two recon cruisers. Now the first of these is definitely the better of the two recon boats. Uh, this is the Force Recon. Uh, both of these do get... 20% longer warp disruption range per level of recon skill trained, which gives a very, very long point for tackling ships from a distance. So they're very good at tackling at a long distance. Uh, in fact, if you have recon trained to five, uh, the natural uh, range is uh, 18 kilometers for scrams and 48 kilometers for disruptors. So 48 kilometers away... Okay, and we're having a little keying up in the background. If you guys could check your mumble push to talk setting, make sure that it's uh, enabled, or if you could mute yourself in channel, that'd be appreciated. Yeah, so it gets a very, very long range for uh, disrupting and makes it uh, fantastic for tackling, especially in uh, low sec, null sec, and wormhole space. Uh, both types of recon ships also get a bonus for their turret damage and also to remote sensor dampeners effectiveness, which is helpful. Uh, if you can put a uh, sensor dampener on there, it can help to, uh, you know, make it a little tougher for people to lock you up. Uh, the Aratsu is more helpful because it can fit a covert ops cloak so it can sneak around unseen. Basically, it's the first choice of hunter killer scouts for hot drop sneak attacks in low sec. So you have the Urazu prowling around in low sec looking for targets, gets within 40 or 45 kilometers, uncloaks, uh, locks up the target, pops a Sino, and everybody warps in, you know, basically does a hot drop into system, and they all have a lot of fun. It's fantastic with stealth bombers. So suddenly you have a ton of, uh, of you know, DPS coming down on the enemy, and it's fantastic. They do have a bit of a delay. That is a good point. Uh, the other recon is the combat recon, which is the Lachesis. Let me find mine here. There we go. Uh, the Lachesis, there's not a lot of difference. Uh, as you can tell, they're both based on the Celestis hull. Uh, slightly different color scheme. A couple more things here uh, you know, that make it look a little bit different. But the main difference is that the Arazu can fit in a covert ops cloak, and the Lachesis can't. It also has a slightly stronger tank and also a little bit more damage dealing because it gets a 5% bonus in missile damage for per level of recon skill training. So it is very often used as a PvP ship, uh, but uh, it's, uh, in my opinion, not as good or not as handy as the Arasu. Let's talk about heavy assault cruisers, which are one of my favorite classifications of advanced ships. Uh, they're also known as HACs, H-A-C's, for heavy assault, cru heavy assault cruisers. Uh, there are two varieties of uh, enhanced assault cruisers in the Galente line. One is considered really fantastic, and the other one is considered uh, not so fantastic. So let me show you the first one that is fantastic, and that is the Ishtar. There we go. The Ishtar is based on the Vexer tank, or Vixer uh, design. Uh, it has a fantastic armor tank. It puts out a ton of damage, a lot of damage. Uh, it is considered to be a very dangerous uh, heavy assault cruiser in the hands of a very skilled pilot. Uh, to carry a lot of drones. Uh, in fact, it can carry multiple flights of heavies or sentry drones. So it has a big drone bay. Uh, 
Passive shield tanking potential and its drones also make it popular for mission running, so you can fit a pretty good passive shield tank on it as well. Uh, but the Ishtar is a fantastic ship. Now, I've used the Ishtar in a variety of different uh, scenarios. It is a lot of fun to run level 4 missions in the Ishtar. Uh, it's just kind of like running a faster Myrmidon, actually. Uh, so if you're a drone pilot, it's really great. Yes, fantastic in gangs, absolutely. Uh, they can be quite deadly. Uh, I also have used the Ishtar with some special speed fits in some of the Epic Arc missions. There's uh, the Galente Epic Arc has some particularly difficult missions, and the Ishtar handles them with ease. So there's a lot of value uh, in the Ishtar. Very, very fantastic for running mission sites. So uh, if you get the Ishtar, uh, if you do like running, uh, uh, if you like having uh, drone boats for running missions, uh, you're going to be very, very comfortable with the Ishtar. So imagine having a, um, flying a, uh, or a Dominix, they actually go fast. <laughs> that gives you an idea of what the Ishtar is like. Yeah, and I wasn't talking about the Sisters of Eve Epic Arc. I was talking about the Galente Level 4 Epic Arc, which is a little tougher. Thank you. Uh, let's check my, um, let's check my settings here. Am I coming through okay? Am I, do you hear me alright? Yeah, I don't know what's going on here, but let me, uh, let me go ahead and carry on, and if it gets too bad, we'll, we'll try to reset. So thank you for your patience. Okay, so I'm gonna undock in my Demos. The Demos is the other flavor of heavy assault cruisers. Um, heavy assault cruisers, uh, let's see here. This is, uh, the Demos is based, as you can tell, on the thorax design. Am I flying in the Demos? Yes, I am. That is a Demos. <laughs> uh, has a very heavy tank. Uh, puts out some decent damage, but it's relatively slow for a heavy assault cruiser. Uh, a lot of people call this the Dimost. Yeah, no, I thought it was the Phobos, but it wasn't. This is the Demos. Yeah, but a lot of people call it the Dimost. Uh, it's very expensive. It tends to be primaried, and as a result, it tends to die pretty quickly. Uh, however, if you do fit it for maximum damage, uh, it puts out a ton of DPS. It's kind of like a uh, thorax on steroids, if you will. Especially if you put Tech 2 guns and, uh, and you know, something like uh, null um, yeah, ammo, advanced to Tech 2 ammo in it. It can put out a ton of, uh, a ton of damage. Uh, some people do try to fit it as a sniper. It's not particularly effective in that role. Uh, but uh, as a, you know, up close and personal knife fighting, brawling ship, it puts out a ton of DPS. It's great in a gang. But, uh, that's right. No, did I say null? I meant void. Void is better up front, up close. Thank you very much. And so, uh, the Demos, actually, I do fly in fleet, uh, and it's kind of handy to have. Uh, it does, uh, put out some damage. I've had pretty good luck at it, but I've never been primaried. So if I was primaried in this thing, it probably would die pretty quickly, which is too bad. Hopefully this will get some love too in the next, uh, when they get to the Tech 2 ships. And, do some rebalancing there. Okay, let's go to the heavy interdictor, which is the cruiser version of the Eris. Uh, in the Galente line, that's known as the Phobos. It's also based on the Thorax hull. If someone could post the link to the Phobos, that would be great. And for some reason, I have two of these. I'm not sure why. I must have picked up another one and forgotten about it. Okay, here is the Phobos. It's also based on the thorax hull, as you've seen. Uh, I it can, it's optimized for tackling in null sec zero zero and also in low sec. It has a very strong armor tank. Uh, I would say that the Armar Devoter Hick is, uh, tanks a little bit better, but the Phobos has an extra mid slot, which means that you can uh, put in an extra sensor booster and catch fast targets a little bit easier. Uh, what this ship does is that it will erect a 12 to 20 kilometer radius warp disruption bubble around the ship. So that is uh, between the, it is uh, different than the Eris. The Eris launches the uh, warp disruption bubble and can fly away. However, the Phobos 
has the bubble actually around the ship itself, which is a bit of a disadvantage. Uh, so what that means is that if something gets caught in the bubble, they're going to see you right away and probably try to kill you, which means it's why you have to have a good tank on the thing. Also, you can put a script in the uh, warp disruption bubble on the Phobos, which increases the range of the point by an extra 50%, and also uh, focuses the effects that uh, it basically has infinite strength, which means that you can even capture capital ships in uh, with a Phobos warp disruption bubble, which is really cool. As to how many ships I own, uh, I don't know, probably a you know, couple hundred. I never took count. I probably should do that. Let's talk next about the Galente Tech 2 logistic ship, which is the Oneros. Here we go. The Oneros is based on the Execrer hull design, uh, which is also now a nice uh, logistics Tech 1 logistic ship. Uh, this is just like the um, Executor, but more so. Uh, it specializes in remote armor repair from a long distance. It can provide support to frontline combat ships. Uh, it has a number of bonuses optimized for that. It gets a 65% reduction on the power needed for remote armor repair systems, which is very nice. Uh, also, for each Galente cruiser skill level trained, the ship receives 150% bonus to remote armor repair system and trekking link range, which means you can be very far away from the target that you are repping, uh, which gives you a little extra safety. You get some bonuses to armor maintenance uh, repair bots, uh, which are the drones for armor repair. Uh, it helps to improve their performance by an extra 20%, which is also very cool. And... Um, Basically, it's a fantastic armor repair ship. Now, you do tend to find these in uh, smaller gangs, generally. I know that uh, shield repair is more popular uh, for logistic ships than uh, armor repair, but they are still very, very handy, and you will see them uh, used quite frequently in many small small gang fleets. I've used this logistic ship to repair the paws many, many times. <laughs> Back when we had a pause. So it was handy for that. Let's talk about the Tech 2 Galente Battle Cruisers. There are two of them in the Galente line. Uh, they're both known as command ships. And there's not much difference between the two of them, but let me show each of those to you. Uh, they are the EOS and the Astarte. And I'm going to go ahead and start with the EOS. Okay, here comes the EOS. Uh, the EOS is the fleet command ship. It provides bonuses for information warfare links in a fleet, which boosts the strength of electronic warfare mods like ECM and DAMPS. Um, it will increase the range of electronic warfare mods and also increase the fleet's sense. You'll see this ship used in fleet quite a bit to help boost all of those kinds of capabilities. Fleet command ships have a big impact on uh, the strength of the fleets. Uh, it can make a big impact on their outcome in battle. And this is the EOS, and it's more frequently used as a fleet command ship. It's not one of the more popular fleet command ships. There are other races that uh, are more popular than the EOS, but if you're trying to boost the strength of electronic warfare, uh, this is a great ship to have in fleet. Let me uh, undock in the Astarte here. Okay, here that comes. The Astarte looks very similar, slightly different color, as you'll see. It's the field command ship. Uh, the Astarte basically is a stronger version of the Tech 1 Brutix. Uh, has a lot more DPS, has more tank, and has better resists. So uh, this thing could actually be quite a beast in fleet. You can also fit um, uh, you can fit some uh, uh, warfare link modules on this as well, but you don't get the same kind of bonuses. So generally, the Astarte is used primarily as a big DPS platform. The only problem with these things is they are really expensive, so you don't see them very often. I bought them, and I've actually never flown them, even though I can fly command uh, ships. Uh, it's just they just kind of sit in my collection, and every once in a while I take them out and spit them and polish them and you know touch them fondly. You know, say my precious. That's about it. 
Uh, unfortunately, my Kronos is is in Free to God, so I cannot show you the Kronos that I have. The Kronos is the Galente Tech 2 uh, battleship. Uh, it is the Marauder. Uh, a Marauder is uh, basically, it's an interesting ship. I was very excited when I got it, and then I flew it a few times, and I think the Marauder's role has been kind of lost a little bit. So it's um, it's not as helpful or as useful, uh, but if you want to go ahead and thank you, Anta, if you can click on the link there that Anta's just posted on the on the uh, Chronos, you'll see that it's based on the Megatron, which I think is the most beautiful ship in all of Eve. Chronos pilot only has four turrets, however, for weapons. It has eight high slots, but four of those are for weapons. However, they all deal double damage, so you can fit four large blasters on it, and it's just the same as having eight blasters, which is really, really cool. Uh, the other slots can be used for other things, like tractor beams and salvagers. So you can fly the Kronos in missions, blow things up with their super, you know, double-strength guns, and then tractor them in and salvage them all at the same time. Yeah, Marauders are just a Tech 2 battleship. Uh, they're designed to be able to uh, put out a lot of damage with a small number of guns and also be able to salvage and bring and tractor things in as well. Uh, very, very cool. It also gets a bonus to webbing. So you can fit a Weber on it, and it gets a very, very strong webbing bonus, which will help to kill small targets. And sometimes you'll see a Kronos in a fleet, used specifically for that purpose. So uh, I don't see them very often. They are very expensive. I've flown them in level four missions thinking, this is great. I can salvage and uh, tractor in at the same time I'm blowing things up. And what I've really found is that um, you fly in. It's better to fly a battleship, kill everything, and then bring in a Noctus. It's actually faster. So I think the Marauders kind of lost its way. It's not quite as useful as it used to be. Oh, and my sin is in Free to God, too, so I can't show you that one either. I'm sorry. Uh, someone could post the link to the sin. That would be fantastic. Yeah, too bad. Uh, I just got it, too. I just just got the skills to be able to fly Black Ops, although I've not done it very well. Thank you, Enta. Uh, the sin is based on the Dominic's Hall. It's a little bit darker and cooler looking. Uh, it's the big brother of the Arazu, if you want to think of it that way. Uh, it can move but cannot warp while cloaked. Uh, the Arazu can warp while cloaked, but the uh, Sin cannot. Uh, but they're both superb at uh, at doing one thing, and that is getting involved in Black Ops. Uh, and they're, uh, the Sin is designed to provide covert jump bridges. If you want to know what a covert jump bridge is, basically you can create a covert Sino field that can be established even in Sino jammed Nullsec systems, and they do not appear uh, in the entire system like normal Sino. Uh, Black Ops battleships can lock onto those fields and create bridges to them, which then allows other covert ops-fitted ships, uh, any ship that gets a bonus to cloaking, like stealth bombers or Tech 3 cruisers with the cruising, uh, cloaking subsystem, to jump in. So uh, basically it's a launching point for hot drops, uh, very handy for doing hot drops and systems. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, we recently did a class on black operations. Uh, take a look at the library for that and uh, give that a listen, and you'll see how, how these ships have a very specialized role. I would debate you on whether it's the worst Black Ops Santa. I, uh, I know that, for example, the Dirt Nap Squad, uh, which is heavy uh, hot dropping organization, really likes their sins, so, uh, and the Arasu, so they're big on those, so I know some folks might disagree with you there. Yeah. Let's look at the Tech 2 Galente transports. Oh, I don't have my Oxitor here. I do have a Viator, though. Let me show you that one. I don't have my Viator here. Uh, it's in a different station. I'm sorry. Um, the Tech 2 Galente transports, there are two types of advanced transports. They're both designed to move cargo through low-sec uh, low or null-sec space uh, with a fair degree of safety. One is a very heavily tanked version known as a deep space transport. That is the Oxitor. You can click on the link there that Anta has posted. Thank you very much. It is a very heavily tanked cargo carrier, and it gets bonuses for armor repairer, 
uh, and also armor hit points. Uh, it has some built-in, um, basically some uh, uh, warp core stabilizers are built into it. It has a plus two warp strength, which gives it some protection from warp disruptors and screens. But, uh, of course, if they have more than one ship, that could get you in trouble pretty quickly. Uh, I use my deep space transport primarily to carry expensive cargo around in high sec. I generally don't take my Oxitor into um, low sec or null sec. Uh, I think that a blockade runner is a better way to go. The blockade runner in the Galante Tech 2 line is the Viator, and the Viator is uh, a fantastic ship. I'd say it's one of the two best blockade runners, the other one being the, um, oh, what's the Amar one? Procurer? Tell me if I'm wrong. Pro Raider. Pro Raider. Thank you very much. I should know that. <laughs> Not the Prowler, the Pro Raider. Um, I always get those confused. The uh, Viator, I'd say, is just behind the Pro Raider. Thank you very much. In terms of its uh, usefulness and flexibility, it is an excellent fast transport for medium-sized cargoes. You can put up to 10K, a little over 10K if you fit it right, of cargo, which is enough to put a cruiser in it uh, if you need to move some things around. And um, you can also put a single giant secure container in it if you really want to cram some extra space in there, which is really kind of kind of interesting. Yeah, it's not a very attractive ship, that's for sure. But uh, it can fit a covert's op cloak, which means that you can warp while it's invisible. It's also very fast and accurate. Agile, so it's very hard to catch. Uh, I feel very safe flying around in null sec and low sec in a Viator. It's very, very hard to catch and uh, makes it uh, a great way to, to move some small, small loads around in dangerous spaces. Yeah, wormhole space, you want to have two, two, um, two high slots. So, yes, that's correct. Okay, let's see. Do I have my Proteus here? I do not. My Proteus is in Osman. That's too bad. Uh, the, the Proteus is an interesting ship. It is the Tech 3 Galente Strategic Cruiser. There's only one Tech 3 ship in the Galente line, and that is the Proteus. If you're not familiar with what a strategic cruiser is, here is a link to explain uh, what it is. Go give that a look-see. The strategic cruiser is a little different than other ships. In addition to being able to fit modules, you can also fit subsystems. And the subsystems fall into five categories, uh, things like defensive, offensive, propulsion, uh, etc. And so that actually determines the number of high, medium, and low slots. So you have a lot of flexibility. The Tech 3 Proteus Strategic Cru Cruiser is designed for flexibility. You can fit it as a high DPS blaster boat. You can fit it as a high-sec exploration boat. You can fit it uh, with um, special modules that uh, make it very useful as a scout in null sec. You can fit it so that it's immune against warp disruption bubbles. Uh, and also fit a covert ops cloak, which makes it very, very hard to catch. Uh, it is also much loved in wormholes, where it has very high DPS and where range uh, really doesn't matter as much. Uh, usually you're going to be right up against a wormhole. You're going to be uh, right there in there with the uh, sleepers up close and personal. So the Proteus is very nice for putting out a lot of DPS in a relatively small package, which makes it uh, pretty cool. And yeah, these are some good fits here, so thank you very much. Uh, it can also be fitted for high-sec exploration, which is how I use mine, uh, which also puts out quite a bit of nice damage. It has all the same bonuses, for example, as a Helios for probe. So it's very, very good as a probe ship. Uh, so it's a very flexible ship. It's kind of the last cruiser you'll need. Uh, the downside is that they are hideously expensive. Uh, they're very expensive to buy. They're very expensive to outfit. Uh, also, if you lose a strategic cruiser, which I have recently done, and it costs me about a billion ISK, so that was a painful day. I uh, don't like to lose a billion isk, but it does happen occasionally. Also, if you lose one, then you lose skill points. Basically, you, you will lose some skills from a subsystem skill, which then, uh, yeah, how did I lose it? I got real cocky in a level four mission, uh, dove into a bunch of folks in a blaster fit Proteus, and I had about 10 frigates 
which apparently were all fit with scrams, and they scrammed me, and I couldn't get away, and I got blown up, which was really stupid. So, uh, you know, whenever you lose a ship, it's because you didn't fly it right every single time, pretty much. So that was just a mistake on my part from getting cocky, because I was really blazing through level four missions and, it, and having a lot of fun and thinking, yes, I did lose skills. I had to relearn one of my, uh, one level of a subsystem skill, which took a while. Uh, if you can cloak, if you fit it for cloaking, you have to use a subsystem that enables you to fit a cloak. So it's, um, it's a nice, nice boat. I mean, it's very, very handy to have because you can use it for so many different purposes. The problem is, is that it's really expensive and, uh, you do not want to lose it. Like I did. And I have to agree, it's ugly. <laughs> I think most of the uh, strategic cruisers are ugly. They're very, um, <sighs> just, they just look weird when you put some of the different, uh, different ones. Yes, Nerlum, if you fit it correctly, it can warp wall cloaked. Very flexible, very expensive, very useful. I'd say it's uh, fantastic for exploration. I'd say it's very good in wormholes. Uh, it doesn't run PVE as well as a Tengu. I would say the Tengu is the king of uh, running missions uh, and doing PVE, but uh, very helpful for other purposes. Yeah, that's true. They nerfed it a bit, haven't they? That's a good point, Enta. All right, let's talk about a few Galente faction ships. Uh one of which is my favorite, and that is the Federation Navy Comet. Okay, so we have War Targets and Eister. Okay, thank you very much. That's uh, not Egg Fay, so that's a bit away. So I think we'll be safe for a while, but I'm going to go ahead and undock in my Comet. This is a lot of fun. I really like these are the faction ships that you can get from the Galente loyalty point stores. Uh, you can also buy them on the market. I got most of mine from running missions and saving up the loyalty points. So they're generally pretty expensive. Some of them are better than others, uh, but they are very, very cool. Uh, the, I really like the Navy Comet. It's a fun boat for low-level missioning. I routinely run level twos in this thing. Uh, it also is pretty good at solo v, v, uh, PvP. It's all about balance. Three highs, three mids, and four or lows give it a uh, encourages an armor tank, but you can fit it a lot of different ways. It has a 30 um, cubic meter drone bay, uh, 15 meg uh, cubic megabits of bandwidth, so you can field three scout combat drones. Uh, it gets a nice bonus to uh, weapons tracking speed, as well as a 20% bonus to turret damage per level of frigate skill training. So. Basically, that enables you to get about 300 DPS uh, if you fit it uh, appropriately, which is pretty neat. So it's uh, very cool. Uh, it's very, very nice. Uh, this uh, one thing I did do like, used to like about the comment that you don't have anymore. Uh, it used to have this flashing police light, and they got rid of the flashing light for some reason, which is too bad. Yeah, everyone used to call it the space police boat, but. The flashing light doesn't blink anymore, so it's not as cool as it used to be. I've uh, I've petitioned that, actually, because I miss the flashing light. But it is a very cool boat. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's kind of like flying a fast Tristan, although the Tristan now has more drone bandwidth. Um, but uh, it is a, a very nice, well-balanced boat for running uh, some low-level missions. I'm now undocking in probably the most worthless boat in my collection, uh, and that is the Executor Navy issue. Uh, there really is not much reason to have one, uh, except uh, if you are a collector like me and just have to have everything. So here's um, <laughs> here's the Executor Navy issue. Uh, this is supposed to be a blaster boat of the uh, uh, of version of the Tech One logistics ship. It gets five percent bonuses to medium hybrid turret damage and five percent bonuses per level to medium hybrid turret radar uh, for every level of user skill trained. Um, but I would say that overall, the uh, Thor is better in every possible regard. I would never go toe-to-toe -to -toe in this ship. It, the tank is not as good. It's just not that great a boat, honestly. So, But I have one. Every once in a while, I take it out and say, yep, there it is. I have it. Isn't that cool? And that's about it. 
The Vexer Navy issue, however, is another story altogether. Yeah, I hear rumors that they're supposed to buffs. I hope they do. We'll see. Um, people are saying that in Odyssey, we're going to see some buffs to these boats, but we'll see. Oh, did they? He announced them already? Awesome. That's great. Oh, I can't. This, that'll make these ships definitely a lot more fun to fly. Oh, there you go. Okay, I'll have to read that later. Fantastic. Well, if we're getting some buffs to these, then there'll actually be some reasons to fly them. Uh, I do fly the Vexor Navy issue quite a bit. Uh, it's an upgrade to what is already a very flexible cruiser. Some people would, in fact, would say that the regular Vexor is a little overpowered these days. However, the Navy Vexor actually gets more drone bandwidth. You can actually field four heavy drones or sentries in this thing. So it's uh, pretty powerful. Uh, it has more armor, more shielding, a bigger cap, more CPU. It has an additional low slot for damage uh, for an extra damage mod or maybe stronger armor tank. It has five slots, which can all five can fit turrets, which gives you at least 20% more DPS than a standard four turret Vexor. Uh, the boat is definitely worth having and a lot of fun, although a lot of people say the Ishkar is more flexible because it has a 5-5-5 slot configuration. The Ishkar also has more drone capacity and bonuses, uh, which gives a little bit more, um, a little bit more flexibility. But I have flown the Navy Vexor and it's a lot of fun actually. So it's kind of like a, Poor man's Ishker, if you will, uh, and uh, pretty easy to fly. Uh, it does very well in level three missions. In fact, I would kind of like, uh, if it's going to get a buff, yeah, it's going to give the Ishker a run for its money, no doubt about it. Ishker. Ishker is the, um, oh, I'm sorry, did I keep saying Ishker? I meant Ishtar, Ishtar, thank you. My syllabus is wrong, I need to correct that. I'm now going to undock in my Megatron Navy issue. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's easy to get the Ishtar and the Ish Ishker. Yeah, it says Ishker for some reason there in the um, syllabus. I'll have to fix that. Uh, this is the Megatron Navy issue. It's a very nice boat. I have flown this in fleet on a couple of occasions. Actually took this on one of Core's uh, Dragon Slayer operations and did a lot of damage in it, so it's very cool. Yep, people see you flying these, however, they say, hey, expensive boat, need to go kill them. Um, it is a more expensive Megatron. It has more structure, it's more armor, it has more shields, it has bigger drone capacity, it has more power grid, it has more CPU, it has more low slots. It just plain flat out has more. Uh, it is a very, very nice boat for use in incursion armor fleets. So if I have used it for that purpose as well. Uh, if you want to be the um, aggro drawing anchor in an incursion armor fleet, you can get some fantastic uh, 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 armor levels of protection on this thing, and it makes it very nice if you're going to be flying in incursion armor fleets. However, most people don't fly incursions and armor-fitted boats these days. They tend to fly shields and uh, the material tends to be superb with if it's uh, with its alpha and uh, heavy shield tanks that's possible so you don't see the ne on navy issues in um, in incursions like you used to but i have used it and it uh, is very effective for that purpose my Dami Navy issue, which is my second favorite boat of all time, unfortunately is also in Free to God because that's where I do my level four missioning. Uh, it is another expensive boat, but it is very, very nice for level four missions. If someone could post a link to the Dominic's Navy issue, that would be great. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Enta. Um, basically, it's a bigger Dominic's. Uh, it um, has one third more structure. Than a regular Dami, uh, its armor and shields are also uh, buffed up by almost one third. Uh, it also has more drone capacity, uh, bigger power grid and CPU, so you can fit more bigger stuff on it. And it has also an additional mid slot, which is very effective for putting in an omnidirectional tracking link, because it is a drone boat. Uh, it tanks like crazy. You can optimize drone damage with an extra uh, tracking link in the mids. Uh, basically, this is the boat that I used until I got my Rattlesnake for level 4 missions, and it's fantastic. It is kind of a pregnant snail, or a 
bad, ugly-looking tennis shoe turned upside down. Now, there are some rumors that coming up in Odyssey will be a Brudix Navy issue battle cruiser. Maybe that's in the um, the link that you posted. I need to check that out. I've not heard any confirmation yet from CCP, but I could be wrong about that. Not confirmed yet. Yeah, but we see pictures. We've seen lots of pictures of funny-looking Brudixes, uh, which tells us that uh, it might possibly be coming out with a Navy issue battle cruiser, which could be very cool. So we'll see. We'll see. There's some strong rumors about that that's coming out in Odyssey, but one can dream. Don't know if it's going to be in more than one, probably just one Navy issue Brudix. There are some very rare Galente ships. Uh, I do not have any of these, but I'll go ahead and, and tell you about them. There's the Opix Luxury Yacht. I think we posted some links in these already. Uh, there are three that exist in the game. Two of them are controlled by players. One was acquired during a CCP Live event several years ago. Uh, the actor jumped out of it, and one of the, uh, uh, one of the pilots grabbed it. Uh, then the ship was sold, and it's owned by someone named Vogru, V-O-O-G-R-U, and still has it. And it's kind of a cool-looking boat, actually. kind of looks like a, um, I don't know, some kind of crab thing, but it's uh, definitely definitely unusual, and uh, it's very, very cool. Um, basically, no one ever flies it. Uh, this, the other boat was given out to CCP to a couple from New Zealand, that were known in game as Catlin Rose and Remus Montenegro, who got engaged on the stage of the 2005 Fan Fest, are now married. So they got an Opus luxury yacht as their wedding gift from CCP. Uh, the third lot can be seen piloted by NPCs in a few missions, including Flame of Peace, which is a level one mission. And that's the only other place that you can see it. So if you ever get the mission Flame of Peace, you can see what an Opus uh, luxury yacht looks like. So there are only three in the game, and the other two are never undocked. The Guardian Vexer is an extremely rare specialized cruiser that it's the only uh, ship in the game that can launch up to 10 drones natively. Uh, there are only 50 blueprint copies for that limited issue ship distributed as prizes in EVE Online tournaments by CCP. Nobody really knows for sure how many uh, actually exist. They occasionally appear for sale on contracts, and they cost about $30 billion ISK when they actually go on sale. But uh, no one's for sure if knows how many still are around out there, because there have been a few that have gotten blown up. The Megathron Federate Issue is the rarest ship in all of EVE. There is only one of them. It was provided as a prize for a live event by CCP, and it's owned by a player called Entity, and Entity has said that he'll never sell it. So the Megathron Federate Issue is the rarest ship all of EVE. I'm going to skip ahead to talking about the pirate faction ships because I'm way behind, and I want to catch up. Galente pilots can cross-train into some other races' uh, ship command skills, and when they do so, they get access to pirate faction ships. So if you cross-train from Galente into Minmatar ships, then that will make both the Angel Cartel and the Serpentus pirate faction ships available. Let's talk about the Angel ships first. Uh, before I unduck in this, uh, can someone verify that we have no war targets nearby, please? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and undock them. Uh, this first one is the Daredevil. The Daredevil is a fantastic angel ship. It's a frigate. It's fast. It has good DPS. It's a very nice attack boat. Uh, I love the Daredevil. I actually uh, have run level 3 missions in a Daredevil, which is a lot of very kind of hairy, but I you know, was able to pull it off. Uh, I strongly recommend you get one. They are uh, awesome boats. Fantastic. They, they polish off level twos in no time at all. Uh, so the Daredevil has got a nice tank on it, very good DPS, very fast boat, and also it looks cool. Um, let me go ahead and undock in the Dramiel. I'm going to dock up here first. 
Okay, here comes the Dramule. Uh, the Dramule is, um, for a long, long time, was by far the fastest boat in all of EVE. It is still uh, super fast, not as fast as it used to be. It's been nerfed a little bit. Uh, it is exceptional at flying around at super high speeds and taunting targets at a distance, which we in the uni are unfortunately all too familiar with. Uh, so I don't think anything is faster than a DRAM now, although you can do some, if you fit some extreme fits, and with implants, you can do some things that are faster. But the Dramule is still the fastest native, uh, has the fastest native speed. It's just not as fast as it used to be. I mean, if you looked at a chart of the speeds, uh, the Dramule was like way up in the upper right corner and when there was this huge gap. Now it's been brought down a little bit, so it's not quite as bad as it used to be. But it is a very, very cool boat. Looks very cool. And it's all about speed. So if you like Minmatar boats, you're going to like flying in the Dramiel. It uh, kind of takes it to the Ent level. I'm going to undock now in the Cinnaball. The Cinnaball is an Angel Cartel ship. Uh, looks kind of like a bug. Uh, it is a cruiser. It is also very fast. Uh, it gets bonuses for projectile turret damage, range, and rate of fire, so it can put out quite a bit of DPS. A lot of people love the Cinnaball. Um, I have to say, I personally have flown it. Uh, it's not my favorite ship. Uh, it's a bit of a brawler. you got to be fast. you got to be smart. Uh, fly, you know, I'm just not that smart. So uh, it's not my kind of ship. Personally, I like heavily tanked ships that are either in your face or shooting at a distance. The Cinnaball requires a certain ama- amount of um, finesse to fly effectively. And so um, there's some interesting ways to fit it because it's pretty balanced in terms of its slot layout. Uh, and you get some very nice bonuses. So it's, uh, yeah, I'm definitely a Galente pilot. That's no doubt about it. Uh, so I do like, I do respect the Cinnaball. It's a, a very, um, very powerful ship, but uh, you do have to pay attention to fly it effectively, and uh, that's just something I'm, I'm just too lazy to do that. My material is also in Free to God uh, because I use that for level four missions. That's too bad. Uh, the material is a battleship. Yeah, if you could, uh, if you could go ahead and link that up. It's also huge. It's a giant ship. Uh, very nice battleship. It's an awesome boat with very high DPS. And the main thing is that it has unbelievable speed for a battleship. You can outrun cruisers in a material. You can outrun cruisers in a material. I, I wanted to repeat that to make sure that you understood that it is ridiculously fast. I mean, you can easily get over 500 meters per second native from a material, and if you start to fit speed mods on it, you can do ridiculous things in it. So it it's, feels like a cruiser with just huge, huge guns on it. It is very popular for level 4 missions, and today it is uh, very much the favorite boat in incursion fleets because it puts out very uh, high alpha damage and uh, can be shield tanked extremely well. So the material is definitely worth getting one, especially if you're a Minmatar pilot and if you like flying incursions. You can really bling those things out and uh, put out a lot of damage, so very effective. I I love flying in level 4 missions in them. You just zoom around, and because they're so fast, uh, it's hard for people to uh, put damage on you, and you can polish off level 4 missions pretty quickly. So uh, McCarroll is a favorite boat for PvE and for incursions. I'm going to undock now in a Serpentis ship which you also get if you cross-train Galente and Minmatar skills. And this one is the Vigilant. If I could have someone post a link to the Vigilant, that would be great. The Vigilant is a cruiser. It is a thorax on steroids. You get extra bonuses for hybrid turret damage and range. This is the boat that the Demos wants to be but can't quite do it. Uh, it also has a stasis webifier bonus which means if you get close, you can basically take any ship and break, you know, take its velocity down to near zero, which makes it uh, die very quickly, either to your own guns or uh, to your fleet mates. So it's a wonderful boat for doing uh, PvP in. 
Uh, and I am, you know, start flying my Vigilant more in fleet these days. It's, uh, it's a fantastic boat. So, uh, it's usually not as, uh, doesn't die as fast as a Demos. So, but I just think it's a better boat all the way around, primarily because of that stasis web of fire bonus. Let me bring out the Vindicator. I see we already have a link to the Vindicator out there. Vindicator is, uh, as you can see, based on the Megathron hull. Uh, it puts out unbelievable, extraordinary DPS. Uh, it has a bonus for stasis web of fires as well, like the Kronos. Uh, it used to be very popular in incursion fleets because of that uh, stasis web of fire bonus. Uh, it has lost some favor to faster uh, boats like the uh, Macarial these days. You don't see it as often in incursion fleets. Uh, but you can shield tank it, and you can use that uh, stasis web of fire bonus to bring targets pretty much to zero speed and blow them up very quickly, and also you can put out DPS of your own. So the Vindicator is a very nice boat. It is extremely expensive. Um, I bought it for the uh, for use in uh, incursion fleets, and I've never taken it out. So here's another boat that kind of every once in a while I spin it around in station and stroke it and say, that's nice, but... There it is. Maybe someday I'll do that. We'll put together a, an armor fleet and uh, do incursions together. But uh, that's it. If you cross-train Galente and Caldari ship skills, then that will unlock the Garista ship line. Garista pirate ships, which are very cool. There are three of those, a frigate, a cruiser, and a battleship. And here is the frigate, which is the worm. And I like this boat a lot. Uh, I fly this quite a bit, actually. Uh, very fast little uh, frigate, and it is it feels very similar to an Ishker uh, because it can carry uh, drones. You, the only difference is that you use missiles instead of guns to draw aggro. I actually fit mine with rockets, fly in, uh, and you know, basically, uh, you know use rockets to draw aggro, and then uh, use the drones to kill things off. So it's uh, it's fast. I mean, the Ishker is definitely a superior boat in every possible way, but the Worm's a very nice frigate. I'd put a very close second place here. Um, some people don't like it because of the missiles, but uh, I don't like it. Yeah, I have to admit, this is, this is a fun boat to fly. Uh, I do enjoy this in Level 2 missions. Uh, it's a very different feel than, say, the Ishker, where you're trying to maintain a certain amount of distance and use rails. Here you want to kind of get up close and personal, and uh, you're still using drones, but uh, you do use the missiles or rockets to do some damage. So very nice boat. Also looks cool. It's got the weird little pirate bunny on it, which is different. Next one is the Gila, which is a cruiser. Let me find my Gila. I don't have this one fitted, so let me go ahead and do it. Some people pronounce it Gila. It's probably correct, like a Gila monster. Um, Gila is a very powerful missile and drone cruiser with bonuses to shield resists. It is a match for many Tech 2 Assault cruiser pilots. Um, people who fly Gila's to, with have high missile and drone skills uh, swear by them. Uh, there's a lot of ways to fit this boat, so it is very flexible. It's ugly as hell, like all Caldari ships are, but uh, it is very, very effective. So it is a, uh, I would say that the Gila is uh, a lot of fun. I've only flown it a few times. My missile skills are not as good, but the drones are very nice, and the shield resists are fantastic. You can put an awesome shield tank on this thing, and it's very, very hard to kill. So... I would say the Gila is uh, as good as many Tech 2 Assault Cruisers out there. And I did bring one boat from Free to God, which I use. This is my current level 4 mission boat, and it is the Rattlesnake. Here we go. This thing is awesome. It has an enormous drone bay. It has an unbelievably strong tank. Uh, a very strong shield tank. You can put cruise missiles on it. You get r uh, bonuses for the range or actually the flight duration. You can easily, easily uh, strike targets over 200 kilometers away. Uh, so you can draw aggro from a long, long way. Basically, this is the ultimate level four missioning boat. 
And I love this thing. Uh, it is awesome for level four missions. You can polish them off in a very, very short period of time. It's definitely expensive and people tend to bling them out with lots of expensive modules. But if you're serious about making money in level four missions, it is definitely worthwhile. Uh, it is, uh, I would definitely not use it for PvP, although some people do. Uh, but I definitely would not risk it in PvP. But in PvE, the Rattlesnake is an awesome boat. Plus it looks cool. It's got this great camela- camouflage uh, look to it. Very, very nice. And I am going to give you my fit for the Rattlesnake because I think it is that good. There you go. That's the fit for my rattlesnake. And as you can see, I have a large micro jump drive on it. I'm going to go ahead and dock up now before the bad guys get me. Uh, which means that I can go into a level four mission. I can turn away from the rats. I can pop the uh, jump drive. I end up a hundred kilometers away, deploy sentries, kill everything. Rinse and repeat. Yes, it's called the Stone Loon Maneuver. And if you're not familiar with that, uh, do a search on the Eve University Wiki for Stone Loon Maneuver. And it I've never had an easier time in missions. I can do the bonus room in Angel Extravaganza uh, without any problem whatsoever, which is just ridiculous how easy it is. It's fantastic. And uh, if you're really serious about level 4 missions, if you can train for the... Uh, Micro jump drive and for sentry drones and put them on a rattlesnake, you will chew through level four missions in minutes and make a ton and ton and ton of isk. So I love the rattlesnake. Fantastic boat. Okay. Well, that pretty much brings me to the end of class. I uh, wanted to just quickly run through all of those with you. If, as you can tell, there's a lot of uh, advanced Galente ships that are quite good at what they do. Some of them are less good, but uh, I would say overall there's un- unbelievable standouts in the Galente advanced uh, ship line. In particular, I very much like uh, the Ishkar and the Ishtar. Uh, they are wonderful boats. I'm big fan of the Rattlesnake uh, and some of the Pirate Faction boats as well, uh, but they're fantastic boats. And if you're very interested in uh, training up for advanced ships uh, in the Galante line, I definitely say it's worthwhile, uh, and you'll get have a lot of fun fit, fitting and flying those ships because they're very effective at what they do. So without any additional uh, ado, if anyone has any questions, if you'd like to put them in the class.e-uni chat channel, I'll be happy to uh, give you my opinions on them. Oh, I mentioned the cap. Forgot to mention the cap ships. Well, I'll just do that real quick. Hold on. And if someone could post the links to these, that'd be great. There are basically four Galente capital ships. The first one is the Thanatos, which is our carrier. It is by far, far the best carrier in the game. Uh, fantastic uh, logistic ship. Also really f- terrific at uh, you know putting out lots and lots of fighters. There's the Nix supercarrier, which is the fantastic supercarrier. Again, the best supercarrier in the game. The Moros Dreadnought. Moros Dreadnought is uh, fallen back into favor recently because uh, people tend to like the extra damage that uh, the Moros can do with its guns. So they buffed that recently. So it's a really, really great uh, boat for blowing out stationary targets. And, of course, our Titan is the Erebus. The Galente Titan is the Erebus, and the Erebus is just a big-ass Titan ship. Less popular than other Titans. Uh, I'm not quite sure why that's the case, but it is uh, it is a very powerful ship. So the Thanatos, Nix, and Moros are all excellent, considered top of the uh, capital ship lines, and uh, strike fear in the hearts of our enemies. Okay. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to cover those. If there are any other questions, uh, feel free. We have a few minutes here. Feel free to go ahead and type that into the class.e uni chat channel, uh, and I'll be very, very happy to uh, discuss them further. I hope this was useful or at least somewhat interesting to get to see some of these boats. As I said, uh, they are a lot of fun to fly and uh, give you a lot of flexibility. Uh, if you do have um, uh, any uh, questions, feel free to uh, drop me a Convo, I'll be happy to answer them, or you can type them here in chat. I do have a favor to ask of you, and that is if you did like the class, do me a favor and send me one S. 
In fact, I just posted my name in chat. Do a right-click on my name. Send me one isk with a comment about what you thought about the class. It's always great to get some feedback. If you have any suggestions to improve the uh, quality of the class, send me an email with uh, any additions. I think you've already gotten one, actually, so thank you very much. And uh, be happy to uh, to receive your feedback, and we'll reflect that in the syllabus uh, and make it better for future classes. Karaman asked, what did I think of Calvary Prime? I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. Turned out to be a great event. Got the damn Galente uh, where it should be, in my opinion, uh, in ownership, clear ownership of the planet. Uh, no reason to have that Caldari Titan hanging over what clearly is Galente property. Do I have a favorite Caldari ship? No. I do like the worm. It's a lot of fun to fly, and I love the rattlesnake. And obviously they have some Caldari influence, but no. Yeah, it was called Caldari Prime. Because at one time the Caldari, in their more enlightened days, did belong to the Galente Federation before they split off, which is a shame, you know. Uh, Icon, uh, what I said was that if you could just do a right-click on my name, let me just go ahead and put that in chat. Do a right-click on my name in chat, send me one isk, just click give money with one isk, and then you can type a short comment, and I'll give you, uh, or you can send me an email if you have any lengthier comments or suggestions for improving the class, that would be appreciated too. If you can't afford the one isk, you might want to consider a different game. Yeah, sorry. No Mimitar ships here today. Although I will say that the Angel ships, which do require the uh, cross-training in Mimitar, definitely worthwhile. Uh, the Macarial is a very, very impressive ship. I uh, very much like it. The Tramiel and the Daredevil are a lot of fun to fly as well because they're so damn fast. So uh, cross-training from Galente into Minmator uh, was not something I regretted. Yeah, keep that rattlesnake fit. You're going to want to have it. Uh, I put a lot of blingy faction modules on there. You don't really need to do that. Uh, if you can fit Tech 2 modules, it's still very, very effective. So go ahead and use that, uh, of that variant of that fitting. Ishkur, let's see if I have one fit here. Hold on a second. Uh, Rattlesnake, I think it's about 700 million. 700 million, I think, is the current going rate for a rattlesnake. Let me check that. No, actually, it's about uh, 600 million. 500 to 600 million, so it's actually gone down, which is pretty good. If you, that's a bargain. You should get one if you can afford it, if you can fly it. Uh, Carmen, uh, Crimson, I, that, you could use a, um, a different rig, but I focus almost exclusively on, uh, drone damage. So I've got, uh, drone rigs on it, and I found that to be, to work very well. And I could use another drone damage app, uh, amp and take off one of the, um, uh, one of the uh, ballistic uh, computers off, I suppose, to give it a little bit more damage that way. And some people have recommended that. But um, I kind of like having the balance. It works very well in that fit. That's all I can tell you. I don't know the stiletto, but I do know the Ares is a really, really good interceptor. I have flown the Ares. I do not fly it well. Uh, but it is a superb fleet tackler. And works extremely well. Kind of hard to kill if you fly it right. So I I can swear by the Ares. I do like the material a lot. If you're trying to post a fit, though, Econ, I didn't get the fit. That's a link to the ship. Yeah, the, the Ares is easier to fit. I mean, it's a little bit more balanced, I think. Okay, well, we've gone almost exactly a little over 90 minutes here, which is exactly what I thought it would be. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and close off here. Thank you very much, kind attention. I hope you found this useful. I uh, do encourage you to try to train up for Tech 2, Tech 3, and...
advanced uh, pirate faction ships uh, in the Galente line. They're fantastic, and you'll have a great time flying them, uh, and give you more flexibility and just more fun things to do in the game. So with that, I'm going to say thank you very much. Fly safe, and we'll see you out there.